Hi, this is Greg here and welcome to the Just A Mean podcast where we chat about the future of making money on the web. Uh, today we have Tawanda from uh, Snake Nation where they are building a more inclusive gateway to the global creative economy. Uh, really great to have you. Thanks for making the time. Yeah, thank you for having us. Kicking off, uh, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, what got you kind of interested in tech? And uh, what led to Snake Nation, I guess? Well, my name is Tawanda Brandon Spanda and I'm originally from Zimbabwe. I grew up in Zimbabwe and for most of my childhood, I've always just been, um, you know, fascinated by tech, fascinated by, uh, well, my toys at the time, right? Um, you know, growing up in rural Zimbabwe at the time, there really wasn't a lot of technology around us. Um, I think my first exposure to a computer was like at nine years old or something like that, but, um, you know, just my, just my mind, it switched, it flipped the switch in my mind. Yeah. And, um, you know, so it went from video games, from Super Mario to, um, you know, joining the computer science class at school. Um, I actually remember at, at, at the time I had one of my friends who had just started his university studies and I was using his notebook from school to learn how to, to learn C. Um, oh, wow. Was, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> you know, he is not so very detailed and I would ask him questions and. You know, I remember when I did my first hello world, not the hello, you know, that age, put in your age and then it tells you you're under age or over age. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. The basic logic. Yeah. Yeah. I remember oh, no. my mom and she's just looking like, what? You know? <laughs> and for me, that was, that was crazy. And, um, I think that was just like, sort of like my, my introduction into, in, into, um, well, just the jumpstart of like my career as a technologist or as a software developer. Mm. Um, my fascination just grew from there, right? Uh, the kids at school were learning, uh, visual basic at the time. Uh, you know, I was doing C, so I was always ahead of the curve and, um, towards, you know, the end of my high school, I applied for a uh, technology program in Finland. Um, oh, so yeah, the, yeah tech, it was hosted by the technology academy of Finland and it was called the millennium youth camp. And, uh, you know, they basically, you know, would, uh, put together like 10 different themes, um, you know, just around, um, I think mostly centered around the SDGs, but just like, you know, sustainability, energy, climate change. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The digitalization. So, um, you know, I, I got accepted, um, into the 2013 program and part of it came with, um, you know, an ability to pursue your studies at, at the University of Helsinki. So I think oh, wow. that you camp, um, you know, that sort of like paved my way into studying in Europe after I finished my college, uh, after finishing my high school. So I was in Helsinki for, um, about a year and a half, uh, was, uh, studying computer science, uh, GIS and physics, uh, well, physics was my major and, um, computer science and GIS as my minors. I'll give this some the time. Thanks. <laughs> really was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so somewhere along the way I dropped out, moved down to Cape town. Um, and you know, I just felt like everything that I'm doing right now and everything that we are building right now was possible without actually, you know, uh, finishing my degree at the time. Yeah. Which was a, you know, like a drag. So um, moving down to Cape town, um, you know, started doing a lot of freelance projects, tried a couple of startups, um. And somewhere along the way, you know, I, I, uh, I ran into Dre from Snake Nation at one of the co-working spaces here in Cape Town. Okay. And you know, what's, what's really just amazing about how we also, you know, I'll touch on this a little bit, uh, how we met is just, there really wasn't, you know, a lot of places where, um, going back to, um, you know, why we are serving the community that we're specifically serving, like me moving from Finland, coming down here, remember there was, um, some, there's. This space is called Think Corner, uh, in Helsinki. And, you know, this is where every time I'd pass through, you know, just, I will just think like, this is where entrepreneurs go, right? Yeah. Coming down here to Cape Town, it was really kind of difficult to find places where, um, you know, I could really find more and more people like me, um, where I would really feel, you know, welcome when I'm not sticking out too much. Um, and meeting with Dre uh, at, at, at one of the co-working spaces that we're working with and, you know, him telling me about Snake Nation and what they were doing and that they had another space, uh, a social studio that, you know, uh, I would come and work out from, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, there'll be other devs there, other creators, Amazing. et cetera. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, that's pretty cool. So, I, <laughs> um, I, you know, I started, I started chatting with Dre more, uh, did some freelance work for them and joined the team, um, as a tech lead at the time. 
And this, I think this was about in 2018. And, so it's been know, going quite a while then, Snake Nation. It, well, Snake Nation has been around since 2015. Wow. That's ages in the tech world. <laughs> yeah. we've, been, we've, been, we've been around for a while. So, um, I mean, I jumped on the ship when it was already sailing, right? Um, yeah. Direction and, you know, uh, I just started rowing with everyone. Um, and, you know, I think that, that just like, um, sort of like, you know, just summarizes, um, kind of like how we, we, we got to Snake Nation. Mm. Um, you know, somewhere along the way, um, the when I was doing freelance projects, um, you know, they were all over the space, all over the place. Right. It was sort of like, um, you know, um, I just dropped out. I do not have a job, you know, who needs something built and how much do they have? So I was sort of like just fishing. Um, so, you know, I was making mobile apps. Um, you know, I was doing chatbots, um, was doing a lot of web design, um, and you know, work getting into snake nation, um, at the time, actually, when I, when I met with Dre, I was actually working, um, on, um, on a message switch for, um, some banking integration that, that, that we're doing down here. Wow. And yeah. it was, yeah, there was a lot of, there was already starting to, there was already, a, you know, a little bit of some, um, some FinTech in there, um, but not, not strongly, not strongly like blockchain. No, yeah, it's not, not deep. <laughs> yeah, no, so, I mean, payments, I, I was in payments, but mostly from a, you know, um, integration perspective, right? Yeah. Um, you have an app, you have a chatbot, you have, um, a website, you want to pay you, you know, how do we make that happen? Yeah. And, you know, um, yeah. And joining Snake Nation was sort of like, okay, like, well, we need to reinvent, we need to, to not reinvent the wheel, but you know, we just need to think a little bit outside of the box. This is more than just an integration. Okay. So coming on to Snake Nation then. So I thought Snake Nation was more of like a Instagram style social media thing, but it sounds like you guys have a heavy focus on payments as well then. Uh, no, well, no, no, not really. I was just, uh, setting the stage, you know, for some of the, uh, payment payments. Well, the FinTech talk we're just going to be having. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we, you are right, right. Um, we'd like to look at this from three pillars, okay. um, people, places, and platforms. So, right. um, I mean, snake, what, what we are in general, we are a tech and media company. Um, so content monetization is really a big part of what we are doing. Um, yep. we, they, you know, gateway to the global creative economy. The, the global creative economy is a trillion dollar annual market, right? Yeah. So, um, when we, when we come, let's say we, we are down here in South Africa, right? And you're like, okay, well, when we look at all of the creatives that we have here in South Africa, um, what percentage of this one trillion are they contributing to? Or yeah. you know, what share of this 1% do they have, right? Yeah. What we are really trying to do is not really like, you know, bring everyone on like that, but, um. We do understand the impact of just moving the needle a little bit, right? Uh, so if, if we're sitting at 5.6%, percent we're sitting at 5% right now, you know, of $1.2 trillion a year, um, you know, what, what would happen if you move that by just 2%? Yeah. We, you know, by just including, you know, all of these people who are not necessarily, who are not being included, not necessarily because they're not good creatives or they don't know what they're doing. Um, but they're just in circumstances that do not allow them, um, or in, they have circumstances that, um, current platforms or current solutions to those problems, you know, are not really addressing it that way. Okay. Um, um, so, I mean, we're going back to that whole three P, uh, you know, people, places, platforms, uh, the snake nation platform is such a platform. It falls under the, you know, technology platforms pillar. Um, and that is really, it's a distribution channel, right? So um, you have your content, um, you know, put it out here, um, and, you know, reach an audience, um, and from your audience. And then the places are like the social studio that, uh, I mentioned earlier when I said I made with Dre. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we have, uh, one in Atlanta, uh, and one in Cape town. And, uh, the idea around the social studios is, you know, uh, give creatives, um, a place where they can, um, where they can meet, they can network, um, and they can be creative, so to speak. Um, so the same model that we have with co-working spaces, et cetera, but, you know, just, um, 
put that as a, um, you know, a creative, uh, a creative rebels welcome situation, right? Where it's, um, you know, your own rules, you come in, you, you come in when you feel, um, PTA, you know, you want to render something that is that your computer cannot handle, go use that Mac over there type situation. So how do you bring together the tools that, um, the, so, I mean, if you can create and maybe the tool set is what, or what is missing, right. You know, come over to, to one of our social studios and, and, and use what's there, you know, find someone else who can assist you with what you're trying to do. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. So it's like a, a really great mind share sort of community. Yep. Um, yep. is, is the places part, the platform then. So do you do kind of like matchmaking inside the platform or do you kind of um, just leave it up to people to go to the, you know, you say, oh, you got these spaces as well where you can go and create and, you know, do your, do your art <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah. I think, I mean, there is no, there's no telling what the, what the platform can do. Right. I mean, right mm -hmm. now we're, um, so we just like really trying to test out like, um, just the, um, the fundamentals, right. So, you know, can you post your content, um, you know, can people interact with your content and, you know, can you track and see all of your earnings from those interactions with your content? So, uh, okay. So d is it like, um, tipping and stuff? Is that, oh, I mean, um, so to, to give like, um, a, a, a quick overview, right? What we're trying to do is if when we look at the current model that we have right now, right? So let's take TV, for example, Netflix, yes. right? uh, Netflix, we've already seen that they're already spending some of their money, um, in, in, into the content that they're displaying or that they are selling on their platform. Right. Uh, even when you go to like TV networks, they do the same thing, right? They go out there and they, they go for shopping, they buy out content and then, and then they come in. That's what they're showing their users. Yeah. yeah. When you get, uh, and then, I mean, the business models, they are like advertising, you're selling the eyes, right? These eyes that you have, um, among other business models. And when you look at, uh, the current model that we have with most social media networks, they're like a, a, a TV network that doesn't pay for the content, right? Because, yeah. um, you, you just go to that platform and most of those creators are not being, are not really being com compensated the same way, um, to the extent that these companies are making money off of the eyes that, you know, um, these creatives are bringing, right? Yeah. Um, um that it, it's, it's just, I mean, it's part of a much, much bigger problem just around, you know, um, the use of, I mean, business models or revenue models that exist on the internet in general. And, yeah. you know, advertising is one that has been in existence for a very long time. And, you know, we really haven't innovated that much, um, at least from an adoption perspective, right. Around how we kept that. So if, if, when you look at, um, uh, when we say, you know, you, you go to the social media platforms to consume the content that are the creatives of that platform are just posting, right. To just showcase themselves, yeah. um, or get like the big elephant in the room, which is like, you know, this money generating machine, you know, this, this TV, this TV network, so to speak, that's on pay for content. So what we're trying to do with the platform is, you know, how can we create, you know, uh, better business models? Yeah. I mean, let's put, let's put advertising on the side. So, I mean, we do know that paywalls work. Uh, we've seen that with only fans. We do know that subscription models work. We've seen yep. that with Netflix. Um, and we're trying to put that together, right? We're trying to say, okay, how do you put the social media element in the wallet in one app? You know, how do we just like close the loop, right? Okay. Like, yeah. Doing it, for example, right? Like, and well, if YouTube is doing it, why, why, why try, why try and reinvent the wheel down here? Um, so we are, our tech team is really, is, is based here in Cape Town. And that really is by design because we want, I mean, the people who are trying to solve this problem. Um, or people who are building this solution to be sitting in the same room, you know, with the users that are experiencing the problems. Yeah. Um, make sure that everyone is enough context and such context is just, um, you know, assuming that everyone has their money in a bank account. So yeah. if you want to sell a service to them, they're going to put in their visa card, right? Um, or not, not, not looking at, you know, other forms of payment like mobile money, for example, which. Uh, when you look at Zimbabwe, for example, I think last year, uh, one of the ISPs reported close to, I think $80 billion in transaction. I think that was the transaction money. Money. Yeah. on mobile money, right? And this, most of them are just like micro transactions in nature. These are yeah. like people, you know, and it's just like P2P, you pay for this, you pay, you yeah. pay for, et cetera. So 
um, w when you're trying to sell a service in a country like that, and you're not considering, for example, that a lot of these people are using mobile money, you know, you're going to think maybe these people don't like the content that I'm saving here, or you mean you assume everything else, except the mere fact that like, you know, the barrier to entry could be as simple as the payment method that you're using. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I mean, the, 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 there are tons of, there are tons of, you know, other small little issues, but a lot of them are just, are just, you know, around like, um, you know, the context of like, uh, assumptions that are made on behalf of these users, uh, because some of the problems that they're experiencing don't really, you know, exist in the rest of the world like that. Yeah. Data, for example, on average is about $5 a year across in Africa pay, um, I think it was $5 per gigabyte. Yeah. For I almost said megabyte. I'm trying not to. But <laughs> I try not to, but I don't, I, I think it's about $5 a gigabyte and you know, well, why is that important? Right. Um, not users are now going to be, you know, very conscious about how much bandwidth or, you know, how much, um, data your app consumes. Yeah. Right? Uh, um, you see, uh, you, you, you've seen, you've heard of like, uh, Facebook basics, et cetera. Yeah. You know, um, because I mean, there are some companies that, are, that, that have realized that like, oh, well, I mean, you, these users do have smartphones. Um, you know, they have open Facebook, you know, here and there, what's the real problem? They can't access, they can't afford the internet, they can't afford the data. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, th these are some of the problems that we are trying to like solve around with our platform to say, okay, let's close the mod, let's close the loop. Right. And then also let's fix the problems that are, you know, um, preventing, uh, the participation, uh, from, you know, from the user base or the demographic that, you know, it just, we're focusing at, um, on right now, as well as, you know, now when they do participate and it's time for them to end their earnings, like also closing that bridge between what we see on their wallet is the earning and what they are actually going to spend at the end of the day, you know, in their hands. Yeah. So rather than cutting through different intermediaries and, yep. you know, YouTube taking their cut, Patreon taking their cut then stripe to settle, you know, everything taking their cut, you're kind of, yeah, you've got bank. the whole system. Oh yeah. And then the bank taking a, a transfer from, from USD <laughs> remittance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I see where you're going. Yeah. So you have ben. a wallet within snake nation, which uses the Venom token. And that's the kind of mechanism of transfer. And then I guess anyone can just swap that quite easily using, uh, interledger, which is something we can come on to or. Is yeah. that where it gets yeah. a bit tricky? <laughs> that's, 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 kind of, that's, that's kind of like the idea, right? But, yeah. um, one of the ways that we tried to, to solve for that, um, was with, um, well, we, we started off with an ERC 20 token, okay. um, and we moved to just an asset on Stellar blockchain. And okay. So you built on Stellar. Okay. We're now on Stellar. Um, and, um, one of the, you know, one of the reasons, I mean, of course the resemblance XRP and, um, uh, the interledger in general. Yeah. Uh, also, sorry. Um, and the, the ripple blockchain, uh, in general. Yeah. Um, and also, um, when we look at, um, the, the anchor network that Stella has set up. So um, Stella itself is a DEX, uh, a decentralized exchange, and you can trade any asset that you launch on Stella with any other asset that was launched on Stella. Okay. So that's, I think that's the same as built into the XRPL. So I guess taking a yeah. fork of that, they've got the same properties. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's that, the, the, um, the, the same founders, right? So yeah, yeah. similarities, right. Exist on both ends. Um, and I mean, the, the solve that, that we're really looking for from an XRP perspective would be through Interledger. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, with, with Stella and the assets and section fees uh it just like that's the direction we decided to move um yeah and this the anchor network um you know was also going to just solve the um the the crypto fiat situation all right so they're an on board they're an on-ramp into crypto they have off ramps off ramps and on -ramp, yeah that they call like uh anchors um, okay yeah no i've not come across it before yeah so i mean the I think for, for what we're trying to do, um, Stella, Stella was, was, was a good fit. Um, yeah. and, 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 and I mean, now you have a situation where you have, a, you, you have users that, um, you know, on this, uh, content platform, right. Um, 
you can consume content, you can pay for content that you want to consume, or as a creative, you know, you can sell your content and, you know, different ways for you to sell your content, whether, you know, um, adding it to a, you know, a, a subscription model or yeah. straight up paywall or, you know, monetizing your live stream or whatever it's going to be, right? Like the second billing, anything along those lines. Um, yeah. and you know, really also trying to find like other creative ways in which, you know, people can, can make money. So, I mean, when, when we look at, um, the role of, um, you know, advertisement in businesses in general, right. In mm. companies, um, I mean, I don't know if you've heard about promoters in the entertainment industry, I like, um, they play a very great role, especially in the upcoming artist industry. So, I mean, you, you're trying to get gigs. People don't really know who you are. Right. Yeah. 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 Sort of plug you. Um, these people who know what, well, you know, who, who, um, who know what's what, um, in the industry, they know who to follow, what music is popping, what you should be doing, etc. sort of like this culture head. Yeah. And, um, so imagine if this culture head could like, um, curate a feed for you and, you know, you could subscribe to that feed. Yeah. So instead of like figuring out, oh, well, who should I follow? What are the top things I should, I need to follow? For example, you know, um. I should be able to go, you know, and, and, and subscribe to, you know, to Greg's feed and, you know, I should just know everything, you know, web payments. I should just know everything fintech. That is, yeah. they, all I need to do is just pay him five Venom every single week. So, I mean, we're, we're trying to really think of different ways in which like, you know, creatives can end from what they're doing without necessarily going to advertising or, you know, selling data, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I think there's levels to it, isn't there? So you've got the base creative who can monetize in various different ways. I mean, maybe in the future you build in, you know, partner networks for sponsorships or something that are not intrusive and stuff like that. But otherwise, you know, you can get tips, you can get micro payments. Um, and then, but then you're saying that there's that level up, which is the curator role, which I think is quite an interesting thing. Cause if you can earn tokens for aggregating knowledge. And um, whether mm. that's, you know, whether that is in return for like a weekly summary of the best things, and maybe that's the, the role it takes, or maybe it is just a feed and people sort of subscribe to the feeds and, you know, maybe there's, they, again, there's micropayments or something involved, but there's a, a new way to earn from, so from social. I think that's really interesting because there's, there's so much information out there and yeah. synthesizing that, or, you know, even just aggregating it at a base layer. Yeah, right. It, it is and a, it is a skill. Of, it's like, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, another layer of it is like, um, you know, people don't know who to trust anymore. And what, yeah. part of what, part of what, you know, what we are big about is just allowing people to tell their own stories, their own way, you know, like just that freedom, you know, to, to own your narrative. Right. So, yeah. uh, you know, when you, when, 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 when you, um, so, I mean, I, I, I went to college in Europe, right. Coming yeah coming straight here from Africa. And I'll, I'll tell you like my, what the view that I had of just the life in Europe in general was much, much more realistic and closer to, you know, to what's on the ground than what my peers in Europe, you know, the idea they had of the, the life that we have. <laughs> yeah. <but. laughs> I, I, don't know that. That. I don't know if that's making sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, so I, I never really saw anything that was like really a culture, like Oh, a wow. Right. Oh, I've heard of it somewhere. I've watched it in a movie somewhere. And I'm like, um, now, so tying it back, right. It's like, it's, it's about who owns the narrative, right. Mm -hmm. and who, who, who has the power, whoever, whoever has the power to tell the story, you know, is going to step, is going to tell the story that, um, is going to like, that, that is going to be popular that people are going to know. Yeah. I mean, where, where, where I'm taking it from is. If, if you are going to know about what's happening in Africa on your TV, right. And then, you know, it is the TV network is in control of the narrative because they're going to decide what they get to show you and, you know, um, and w whether or not that is a true depiction of what's happening on the ground, you know, that is not in our control. It's not in my control. Right. So, yeah. um, when, when you build more and more of those layers, right, you're just like, well, let's, this is not going to be some app that you just open and then it's just like, boom. You know, you're scoring, just watch me, watch me, listen to me, read me, read me, read me. You really be in control of what you see, where it's coming from, how it's coming to you. You know, you want to see 
you know, um, only from specific hashtags, only from specific users, you know, just like trying to, to, to move away from the algorithm push. Because if you really look at the algorithm, it's not really centered around what users want or what's best for users. It's also just centered around how can we get you to stay on this platform the longest. Yeah. So if you are going to open Facebook for 10 minutes, we're going to tweak our algorithm so that you stay for 20 minutes. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes we just assume, ah, this is a curation for me. <laughs> oh, this, these guys are so kind. They're so nice. They're giving me this curation of content that I like. You don't know if you like it, you know? Um, so I mean, Twitter is a nightmare for this at the moment. And I saw someone <laughs> literally tweet about it earlier because they have those sort of, um, lists that they do now, but right, right. you know, if you're in the, the Bitcoin currency list, it's just like your whole feed is now that, and it's just a load of rubbish. To be honest, like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're assuming, they're assuming yeah. that they know what you want, what they know what you want to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think so, getting people, I think that there is a name for it that I've come across it before. It's called Maven and they kind of like look out and they sort of, um, kind of keep, keep watch on everything that's going on, but they're very kind of tied into the scene, sort of going right. back to your thing earlier and, and they yeah. like go, okay, what's cool and what's not. And they sort of steer people one way or the other. So I think, it, yeah, it's a really yeah. interesting mechanism, making that a bit more formal or, for, or bring that to the forefront, that curation element. Right. <laughs> and I mean, the music streaming platforms have been doing curation pretty well. So, I mean, you go to Spotify, you'll find that's it. what Spotify hit on. They realized that early on that people making playlists, it's exactly. weird how they've, they've gone a bit the other way now. Um, cause they had like top trend, uh, top trends and stuff and you don't, it's almost like they've suppressed the people playlist now that they've got like really big and maybe that's the advertising thing um, again. Maybe, yeah, maybe they're going yeah. to what we're talking about. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's the thing uh, to finish off. Like, it's like, I don't want to know, I don't want to always stay in, like, I wouldn't know where to go to find out. I mean, I'm a hip hop head, right. To find out what the latest hip hop is, uh, what did Drake release today, whatever. I, like you give me someone who's going to tell me, okay, listen to this track. I yeah. mean, listen to this one, listen to this one. All I have to do is follow that person. I don't mind paying them. You know, it's just like one of the other ways of thought around this, right? Because, um, um, and then as a creator and you're trying to, to be on the scene, you should be able to spend some venom and ask someone to include you in your feet, in their feed. Yeah. Right. There's, there's, you know, like it's, it's like a two way street for everyone. Yeah. And people can be quite selective over, you know, who they choose. But again, it's there, there is like, yeah, kind of incentive there on both sides to get it right. Cause I guess they're staking their reputation, the curators on a new person and yes. Yeah. In return, the new person gets like awareness and then also more money in the form of venom tips or whatever it is, sort of micro payments and stuff in their content. It's an interesting little ecosystem you got there. So you're currently in beta or you, you just released. When you say we're ready, like we, <laughs> we were ready, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, you, know, you, you, you get new users, new things start to pop up. Um, but I mean, right now, what, 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 we, what we currently have, um, you know, and you know, I'm, 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 I'll actually, let me actually drop a link here. Ignition.co, uh, that will be the, the company site you have that already, uh, so, but I'm also going to drop in snakenation.io. So that will be the landing page for the, the Snake Nation platform. Um, as well as the instructions on how to join the beta will be there. And, um, just, you know, where, where we're at right now, um, we, as I mentioned before, we just, we're trying to, um, to close off what we call the trilogy which is, um, you know, allow people, are people able to post the content, you know, yeah. uh, are people able to interact with that content and can they see their earnings from that content. And what's important and why I keep saying this is like, that's what drives our platform, right? So, yeah. um, to, to get a little bit technical around it, where we are rewarding users for their contribution, for their content contribution at the yeah. core, right? You post something, we'll give you some venom. Um, get some, we, we will keep incentivizing you, you know, to keep making great content. Mm. Uh, um, in return, you know, what, that venom that you are earning, you know, like the goal isn't really to, it isn't for this to be like some point system that is just living in your wallet. It's, it's actually real money. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, during our beta, you, you will be able to, to accumulate venom. Um, you just won't be able to withdraw it for fiat yet. Right. So 
within the platform. You can use it to unlock stuff. You can attend our events. You can use it in the snake. You can use Venom in the Snake Nation ecosystem. Okay. You know, yeah. Um, and then when post launch uh, for off the test net, then, you know, you'll be actually able to trade it. Uh, but then the idea now is, you know, how do you, how do you close the loop from, you know, I just posted a video and I said, I want five Venom for you to watch this video. And then I, and then you see the video, you pay me the five Venom. I should be able to see that in my wallet. Right. Right. Um, and I should be able to see for which piece of content it was, and I should be able to see the, the settlement information, the chain on chain settlement information, because this is a, this was an actual transaction that happened on the blockchain. Yeah. That's yeah. quite an interesting challenge. Cause it, it must be, especially with like the low data world you were kind of talking about earlier. Yes. I guess that reporting element and the speed at that, and it's all, it's all going to be very dependent on. <laughs> on yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> it added, um, we've had some clever ways to get around it, you know, to try and make the, um, the experience, you know, as real time as possible. Mm. I think the other big challenge that I just didn't touch a little bit around is like, um, you know, our, our users here are not all walking around with the latest iPhones and the latest Samsung. No. Etc. You know what I mean? For the performance. <laughs> Uh, we can make it as real time as we would want to, want it to be as developers, but you know, you start to get feedback from users saying when I open my wallet, you know, um, it's janky when I'm scrolling. Right. And you think, oh, I know why, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I, I have real time, I'm, I'm listening for information real time on this page. It's too, it's too heavy. This device is not the fastest in the world. So there is a balance of that, you know, like, um, figuring out between how do I deliver, you know, information in the most, um, efficient way, right? Um, real time information without necessarily breaking the bank. Yeah. And the performance. Could you do uh, stuff like, um, sort of trigger internet based text messages or something that doesn't cost a snake nation potentially money. <laughs> um, but something that, you know, maybe there's a daily summary, you know, that's just a text message that goes out and you know, that, that small bit of data is. It's just tech. Right. So, so <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, it's, it's, imp it's important that you mentioned that, right? So part of what we've been doing as a company is, you know, if we really, if, well, not across the board, but when we look necessarily around the three pillars, mm. when we, when we hit problems that we net, that is there's necessarily no solve for, we build, we build it. Right. Okay. Similar, like, well, like similar, that's like, in a way, that's kind of like what we're doing the snake nation platform. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I'll say this very carefully because I mean, <laughs> not, we reinvent the wheel all the time, but you know, um, I mean, we needed spaces, you know, for, for, for our creative network. And we didn't have a lot of spaces where we, our creatives could go to and be free and create like they do. So, I mean, that's why we started pursuing creating our own social studios. Right. And, you know, we don't have a, a lot of them, but you know, we're, we're, we're well on our way. We're just starting and, you know, well, when you come down to Cape Town, you know, we'd love to host you. Like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like unicorns, right? Uh, for the, for the in Cape Town, it's got like unicorns venture studios and, okay. uh, in Hout Bay, um, yeah. overlooking the Atlantic. It's, it's a nice place to be in. It's a creative with the air, the mountains, the mm -hmm. you feel, you know, um, one with nature, so to speak. Uh, but anyways, the, the, so we're saying, you know, places, platforms, I mean, do, do our people have a platform like that is seven way? Like, you know, we, we went ahead and we started doing that. We we're in beta now in our social studios. And then what I didn't touch on earlier was the people side of things, right? So yeah. we do we have in real life communities, we yeah. have, um, you know, university societies that are like, um, fraternities in some countries. Uh, but those are like snake nation clubs where, you know, we can meet up and interact with people. So you oh, see cool. that yeah. make, making side of things that you're mentioning. Um, I mean, that is coming on the app, but it's already happening at our events, but yeah. just like, you know, you go and stand with that guy, but just like <laughs> it's a free event, you know, go around network, see people, you know, um, collaborate, etc. So, um, um, for, we're just trying to grow or become the gateway to the creative economy with, you know, these three pillars working together, mm -hmm. right? We find you like, you know, you meet us at the university. If we fail to reach you on the internet somehow, right? You know, join our club at the university, visit our social studios, you know, like, um, you know, create, create it or social studio, record one of your songs at one of our social studios. And then, um, when you now have your creative product, post it on our platform. Yeah. 
and start earning. The platform and we'll kind of like help you monetize all that. And we'll, we'll, we are not really expecting you to be a blockchain expert. In actual yeah. fact, you know, like that's not an expectation at all. Yeah. Like, uh, it's, it's part of, it's, we're not talking to our users about not JS. We're not talking yeah. to, you know, <laughs> like it's just, this is the time we're in. Like everyone is getting to know about blockchain, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. I think, you know, as we, as we go into the future, as a user, you just be able to open your, open your app, you know, see the content, go to your wallet. You should be able to, you know, complete your KYC. Of course, uh, you should be able to order a card. Yeah, it should be for the MasterCard, Visa card, and that is linked to your crypto. So you should never really have to worry about how am I going to trade this crypto, <laughs> et cetera. Uh, but I mean, you know, contactless, contactless payments are already, or, you know, but if you don't want a physical card or the virtual card, you know, yeah, you to pay, add it to your watch, whatever you have to do. Um, but the idea is like, uh, let's use all of the goodness that comes with this technology, but we don't need, to, we don't like, we can obscure all of these complexities from the users, right? Yeah. Uh, so they just use it the same way they use, um, you know, all of their other social, all of their other popular apps. Yeah. Yeah. No, that sounds such like such an expansive design space. Uh, you've got a lot of building to do there. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, we just, we just well, 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 when we were talking earlier, right, just around what we, we were going to cover, I was just like, you know, like I, I would really like, hearing this, hearing a cow speak and, you know, just like cow's world, yeah, know, this company, hearing Dre speak, um, <laughs> you know, hearing like all, all of the different, all, all of the different members, we are all in our own, like, uh, mini verses, so to speak. <laughs> Best. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And I bet when yeah. they collide, it's quite creative, quite a creative force. Uh, I suppose that's why you guys have got so much <laughs> under your remit. No, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, I guess wrapping up, um, as we've kind of run on a fair bit, it's been a really interesting conversation. So <laughs> yeah. Um, if anyone listening wants more information, they can go to snakenation.io, the website I saw earlier. I'll drop any links below. Um, dot .co, Steve, sorry, um, dot .co. .co. Yeah. Dot okay. .co is the company website and, um, links to the dot .io will be there. So okay. So that's the best one. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll drop everything you need to know below. Um, definitely check these guys out, give them a follow. Uh, you guys are across socials, I guess, and all that. So yeah, call on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Seek them out, check it out. And yeah, it would be great to see how it goes when it launches. When it, are you planning to launch in kind of next year, maybe? On Q1 next year. Q1 next year. So that'll be yeah. big. So yeah. You know. Send it around, you know, private sale. Um, and that, that should really start going out, um, early January. And okay. Wrap up. You know, we just move from testnet to, uh, to the lab. Yeah. So, well, here's some major alpha then. So getting early and, uh, yeah. do some great stuff. <laughs> cool. No, really great to have you on. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone for tuning in, uh, to just the mean talk podcast, where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Uh, please do get involved. Give us a like, if you like the content, co uh, comment below, if you like what you've heard and have more questions or anything and yeah. Please recommend us to your friends. And I think that is it. Thank you for being here again. All right. Cheers, man. Thanks for having me. Cheers.